Hello and welcome to Disseminate, the podcast bringing you the latest computer science research. I'm your host, Jack Wardby, and today we're recording from ACM Sigmod Pods in Philadelphia. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Thomas Hooter, um, who will be talking about his paper, Jedi. These are the JSON documents you're looking for, which I think is the best name for a paper I've ever seen. Thanks. Um, Thomas is a postdoc um, at the Database Research Group at the University of Salzburg, and he focuses normally on novel algorithms for similarity queries, as well as their integration into fully-fledged database systems. Welcome, Thomas. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chuck. So let's dive straight in. First of all, can you set the scene for your research for us and tell us what, what is JSON? Okay, yeah, JSON is a data format. I guess everyone has in some variety touched it, whether it might be a data set which has just yeah the data format to store it, or I don't know, exchange data in mobile applications, or especially here for the database community, I guess we used to it from document stores where we store the semi-structured data. Awesome. So What's the, the problem that you're trying to solve in your research? So initially we have a lot of background, as you mentioned, in similarity search in the group and also for hierarchical data. And XML was like, there's huge of related work that was done, but JSON kind of wasn't touched ever. So the initial question was why? And I mean, we found out during the process that it's not that trivial, Okay. but that was the initial spark. So. So what was the reason why it was never taught? Yeah, so this is one of the major problems that occurred because JSON is, it contains ordered as well as unordered data. Mm -hmm. So in XML, you usually have the order given and unordered data is actually really hard to yeah, tackle in any sense and especially for similarity. What's the motivation for this line of work? Why, why do we need it? So in similar, similarity search in general, it's like not always it works that you do an exact match, like you don't always have a number and you can't compare five to five. But sometimes, like in our example in the paper, if you're following that, um, you may crawl the web and you get from different data sources different kind of data that are actually the same but stored in a different way. So this exact match might not work at all. And therefore, some differences should be tolerated and it's, of course, perfect if you can somehow quantify it. What was the solution you developed then? Talk us through the approach you took to solving it. Okay, yeah, so we started by checking the related work as usual mm -hmm. and what you find is like, yeah, millions of online tools where you paste your JSON documents, you compare them. <laughs> but what it actually is, it's a text document that considers a string line by line and this essentially ignores a lot of information. So the hierarchy, because JSON is nested, you can have, yeah, yeah, whatever many nestings. And this is ignored as well as the unordered nature of the documents, so the key values of the documents. So those are actually not really what we would like to have. I mean, it's nice to have, but as essentially not, I guess, the end of the story. Okay. And yeah, therefore we, do not want to lose information. So first of all, what we did is we need a representation of JSON documents that we can work with and does not lose information. And due to the hierarchy, a tree is a somehow natural representation that we extended to also keep like the order, unordered information. And based on that, we went on due to our experience with hierarchical similarity queries, we went the straight approach, there is like the tree at a distance, which is a common and well-applied similarity measure. However, we applied it for them and we have proven eventually that it's MP complete. So okay. again, not what we want. Can you talk a little bit more about how, uh, how the tree edit distance actually works? Okay, yeah, edit distance in general is like, so the, the huge benefit is that it's totally, it's simplistic actually, also for strings or other things. You have a set of edit operations and you basically just count the number of those operations that you need to transform one document into the other. And for us in the JSON trees representation, it's just how many nodes do you have to delete, insert or exchange the information in the node that you get actually the final distance value. So it's this number of edit operations. So once we've kind of we're at this point, what's the next step? How do we move forward from this? tree edit distance to, to, to Jedi. 
to Cheddar, yeah, right. So we were at this dead end, like it's empty complete. So what to do next? Yeah, actually we could have a closer look because what actually happens to the chasing trees if we apply the distance? And we found out that it it's too permissive and it's too powerful. So what it does, it the tree at a distance allows to split subtrees to merge them back again. And since JSON, each subtree is a subdocument, and the document has its information, we do not want to split it somehow or move across. So we introduced the constraint that we would like to preserve this document structure within the JSON document. And yeah, by introducing that constraint on top of the tree at a distance, we were able to define this first. Yeah, JSON at a distance or JEDI. How did you go about evaluating your new, your new approach? Yeah, we were able, so for the Jedi, to construct a baseline algorithm out mm -hmm. of existing algorithms by combining them, adapting, and that runs like in yeah, higher complexities, yeah. but still it's doable. And we applied that as a baseline to do a similarity lookup. So I have a database with a lot of JSON documents, and I just query a document against the database and give me all similar ones. And yeah, so the baseline approach, we evaluated, um, I think, 22 data sets, and we were not really happy. So it didn't really scale, and complexity was too high. Yeah, the next step was to address two main issues that usually occur in similarity search. So what happens if you have large databases? What happens if we have large documents? And a typical approach, it's called filter verification framework, um, is we, we try to apply that on top of it, but there are many steps that we had to address. One of them, so processing large databases by comparing to all of the documents, so a natural approach is to build an index. Since there is no related work on JSON similarity, we had to introduce the first JSON similarity index, and we did that. And further on, we also applied filters, mm -hmm. since the verification is that expensive. And yeah, also the verification algorithm, we were able to identify some weaknesses that we could address. And overall, we had then now this nice filter verification framework that we again performed the evaluation on those data sets and they scale nicely. Given this, this finding and this, um, these algorithms you've developed, how do you see them being integrated into maybe commercial database systems, document databases such as Mongo and Couchbase, those sort of things? Is What do they do at the moment, or don't they have anything like this? And would yours naturally fit, your work naturally fit into it, such a system such as that? Yeah, I also explored that. And actually, if database systems provide similarity support, then it's usually on simple data types, okay. like strings or maybe even arrays but that's the end of the story. So it's not provided, and actually a current effort is to integrate my solutions into AsterixDB, and I'm currently on that. How's it going? Yeah, challenging. So yeah. the system is like I don't know much. Beast. I don't know much about this system. Um, can you tell, tell the listeners and myself a little bit more about, about okay. the system? Okay, yeah, it's a big data management system developed at, uh, yeah, mainly UCI, so UC okay. and Irvine. And yeah, it's a parallel database system. And yeah, one main aspect why we've chosen it is that it has a JSON-like data format. Yeah. It's a bit extended, but it's no issue for our uh, distance. Um, so my next question is, what was the, the most interesting and unexpected or challenging aspect or lesson that you, that you learned while working on this topic, and more generally in the, in the field of similarity queries? I think on the one hand it was like these incremental problems that shown up and now we're there and then the next one arised and yeah also actually that it's not that well supported as I also mentioned previously in, in database systems. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's a lot of room to well, for future to, research in the area. Exactly. That, that kind of leads naturally into the next question. You've obviously mentioned you know, working on implementing this in a, in a system. Right. What's the other future directions for this research? Where are you going to go with it next? Yeah, so we have some things going on. Um, one of them is actually, right now we compute a distance. So it's a value that tells mm -hmm. you how different. But what we're currently doing is creating a patch. Then we have JSON patches, which may be beneficial. For example, you don't 
always have to send the document all over again. It's just sensitive and therefore reduce the traffic. For example, we are also currently working on clustering JSON documents, where also the distance can be used to yeah, group them together in similar okay. groups, which may be used, for example, to extract schemas, which then helps to optimize the query efficiency in database systems. I guess the last thing I'll kind of ask is how did you end up working in this area and specifically what attracted you to it and how can other people get started necessarily in, 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 your, in, your, in your area of research? So basically I have to admit also that in our research group the similarity topic was kind of present and I also started at that university and also my pre-knowledge got directed in some of the similarity so to gain knowledge and to yeah, also get on the topic, actually. Brilliant. Well, uh, I'll put a link to your paper and everything in the show notes. And thanks for joining us today. And we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, so thanks for having brilliant. me. Brilliant, yeah. And enjoy the rest of your time in Philadelphia. Thanks, Thank you. you too.